Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Disney's The Lion King released a trailer that everyone's talking about, giving us a look at the studio's third live-action reboot coming in the year 2019. Though, of course, live-action is kind of a loose term. All the animals look pretty animated, but who cares? I don't want them to use real lions in the movie. It's mean to lions and to the humans who would have to work around them. Look, I'm a Lion King junkie. The 94 classic was the first movie I saw three times in the movie theater. As a kid, I had a rad Lion King bedspread. I pretended to be a lion for several years. I didn't talk much, I ate a lot of antelope. Look, I've come a long way to break down this trailer for you, shot by shot, for all the interesting details that you might have missed, what will be the same as before, and what will have changed. Here we go. Okay, so right away we see that Lion King 2019 director, John Favreau, he directed Iron Man and the live action Jungle Book, along with Disney's upcoming Mandalorian Star Wars series. We see how Favreau is recreating most of the exact imagery from the original film, specifically the shots from the 94 trailer for that movie. The sun rising over the African savanna, the grazing antelope lifting its head, the wide shot of Mount Kilimanjaro, the overhead shot of birds flapping over a river. Of course, we don't see the baby giraffe blinking as it steps into the sun, but, but that's fine. You know, it's early, it's early, it doesn't have to be exact. Actually, the biggest difference that I noticed between this footage and the original Lion King is the color palette. Like, rewatch the animated Circle of Life opening, and you can see how the animators kept switching the color temperature. Fiery reds, deep greens, dreamy pinks, hazy aqua, all to accentuate the color variety of this animal kingdom. But while the animal kingdom is certainly rich with diversity, its color palette isn't as exaggerated as these animated cells. In reality, it looks more like the earth tones that Favreau uses shades of tan, green, and brown. So while these animals might not be real, the world they occupy is definitely designed to look a lot more like ours. Let's move on. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. But a king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. Okay, we hear the voice of James Earl Jones returning from the first movie to once again voice Mufasa. Ooh, say it again. Mufasa. Jones is the only major cast member to return from the first movie, but honestly, really, he's the only one whose voice is irreplaceable. I mean, maybe with exceptions of Nathan Lane as Timon and Jeremy Irons as Scar. Chiwetel Ejiofor is voicing Scar here. Billy Eichner is voicing Timon. Seth Rogen as Pumbaa. Donald Glover as adult Simba. Beyonce as adult Nala. Alfre Woodard as Sarabi. You might know her from Luke Cage and Captain America Civil War. John Connie as Rafiki. He actually played T'Challa's father in Civil War and Black Panther. John Oliver as Zazu, and Kika Michael Key, Eric Andre, and Florence Kasumba as the hyenas, Kamari, Azizi, and Chenzi. And Kasumba has played the Dora Milaje guard Ao in Black Panther and in Infinity War. Now, this speech Mufasa gives is the same morning lesson that he gives to Simba as a cub in the old movie. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. We also see this shot of young Simba stepping into the paw print of his father. That actually comes a little later in the old movie, after the elephant graveyard scare, the nighttime kings of the past speech, of course, where Simba realizes he's not yet ready to take over for his dad. Next clip. One day, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. That's the stuff. As Mufasa's morning lesson speech winds up, we see these shots of the stampede rushing into the canyon. This, of course, is from Mufasa's terrifying death sequence. I think if you look really closely, you can see tiny Simba kicking up some dust as he tries to flee. Yeah, hold on to your butts. This movie's gonna hurt all over again. Then, finally, we get the opening vocals of The Circle of Life. As we swoop in on Pride Rock, the framing matches the original film almost exactly, with the exception of Zazu not being in this shot. Though well, maybe this is like from his point of view or he's about to fly into it. Let's keep going. <laughs> Okay, some 
more familiar images here. Rafiki greets Mufasa and anoints the newborn Simba. One little change though, you remember in the original, Rafiki splits open a fruit and spreads the juice of that fruit on Simba's head. Here he rips up a bunch of roots and it releases a red powder that he uses for the anointing. By the way, that fruit is called a baobab. It's an African superfruit with a lot of health benefits. It represents wisdom. Perhaps Favreau changed that because when you actually rip open a fresh baobab, it's not exactly filled with red fruit juice like a gusher. So making this live action might have required a more realistic source of something bright red to mark with, like this fruit. Unfortunately, it might also mean leaving out the baby lion's adorable sneeze. <laughs> If that's not in the final movie, I'm gonna lose my mind. By the way, young Simba will be voiced by J.D. McCrary, and young Nala will be voiced by Shahadi Wright Joseph. Moving on. Okay, Favreau also includes these shots of the giraffes, zebras, elephants, all bowing, which is pretty crazy to see in live action considering there's no freaking way that all of these animals would be anywhere near each other in the wild. Like as a kid, seeing this in cartoon form, it made sense, one big happy kingdom. But now I'm like, if there's a cheetah anywhere in that crowd and it doesn't pounce on a zebra, it's stupid. I watch planet Earth, every wild animal that you see is starving to death. So eat your neighbors, no one will notice. And I will always love an abrupt cut from Pride Rock to the title card. Favreau just really gets what feels to bring back. Okay, after listing off the cast, this trailer gives us one final moment. Remember. Rawr. Man, you gotta love the title card, boom. By the way, if this trailer sounds extra percussion-y, it might be because Elton John and Tim Rice's original music is being mixed in with scoring from Hans Zimmer, the king of heavy percussion. And the voice of Mufasa saying, remember, comes of course from the ghost vision scene that comes later in the movie. The cloud imagery here looks a lot more nebulous, suggesting to me that Ghost Mufasa might be more elemental and natural than, you know, a Mufasa-shaped cloud. But that's okay, because a cloud can really take any shape if you squint your eyes enough. Like, these kind of look like lions to me, or just gas to me. Everything's gas. The final shot shows adult Simba back on Pride Rock, roaring with strength. This kind of looks like the end of the film. You know, those early morning hours when the dust was settling after his battle with Scar. So I guess we're to expect that this Lion King live action version isn't really gonna play around with the story too much. It's gonna start and end the same way. Same Hamlet and the Serengeti plot with catchy Elton John songs that we know and love. And honestly, it's for the best. No need to fix what ain't broke. Just make sure to get that sneeze in there. Yeah. But I'm curious to know from you guys, looking at this new voice cast, which actors do you like better in these roles than the original cast? And which do you think will have to really win you over to replace the originals? Comment down below with your thoughts and follow New Rockstars on Twitter and Instagram at New Rockstars. And for my outtakes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EA Boss. And of course, subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of all the stuff you love. In case you want to know what I think about the cast, yay for Glover, oh, for no Whoopi or JTT. But I get it, it's not the early 90s anymore. You can't go home again. Hmm, you know, could you show me that sneeze again. <laughs>